Can you describe the nine steps of self-mastery? Yes, I can. Good. Well, let's go. <laughs> All right. So um, I'll make it brief. Um, so in each in the book, the chapter each chapter is one, one separate stage. And um, I've done a little short video on MarshallMindPower.com uh, channel and on our website that explains how you can use the book uh, and explains the structure of the book. But it also it, when you start going into the book, it explains each chapter. It say, explains the uh, the problem statement. What what are you trying to what are, what are you trying to resolve in each stage? So it's very clear what you're going into. Then it talks about what outcomes you can look towards achieving as a result of going through that process. Uh, and then it talks about how and what kind of people it can help with. Uh, and there's a multiplicity of um, uh, types of people that will help. But in general, if you're interested in becoming a better version of you, then that'll help you. Uh, so the actual steps itself is, the first step is stillness. And stillness is about disconnecting to reconnect. Right, so uh, a good example is uh, in life, you know, we're plugged into our phones, we're, you know, we're plugged into a computer when we're in the office, uh, there's social media all around, around us, and um, we, we get consumed in that, and we forget about ourselves, and the idea is actually literally switch all that, ourse- all that external, uh, external devices off, and I mean devices, not just electronic, but everything, and connect to yourself. Spend time to actually look inwards rather than outwards. Everybody's just looking outwards all the time. Second step is empty your teacup. So empty your teacup is about really uh, opening your mind to new possibilities and um, looking at identifying your teacup. What is your teacup and what's in it? And sometimes uh, there's that beautiful story, uh, and I, this, I talk about this story in the book about this Zen master, uh, uh, this student that wants to go and train under this uh, Zen master, and you know he he travels for f- you know five days and he goes up the you know, goes up this mountain, and eventually you know he, he gets um, finds the school where this uh, master is teaching, and um, you know he gets to the doors and uh, he's allowed permission to go in and then. The master invites him to sit down. No, he just happened to have a tea at that time. So the master says to him, he said, would you like some tea? And he said, yeah, sure. Anyway, as they start talking, <clears throat> this, this young gentleman that wants to learn of him, he's got so much to say. And everything that the master was uh, responding to him with, he said, yeah, you know, we do it this way. Oh, I've done it this way. And, you know, I think this way is better and so on. And it just goes on and on and on. Anyway, the, the master starts pouring tea and he just keeps pouring the tea until it fills up to the brim of the cup and then it over, overflows and it keeps overflowing it's flowing all over the table and everything uh, until eventually you know the student says see if we, see if we, see if we stop you know the tea's falling you know spilling all over the place and it's at that point that the master says well for I can only put tea into a teacup if it's empty and the idea there is actually to completely uh, dispel all notions uh, absorb all notions in your mind to allow new things in and only then can you then see new possibilities uh, third step is possess an eagle eye and possess an eagle eye is really about uh, opening your eyes becoming uh, alert uh, uh, awake and uh, becoming present a lot of people um, go through life uh, looking hard for answers looking hard for solutions looking hard for whatever it is they're looking for um, and uh, Money seems to be a quite a recurring theme because we are programmed in our society that you know it's got to be money that is uh, the thing that resolves all your problems, right? Um, so people are looking hard, and the whole idea is is don't look, just see, um, and is a massive difference between looking and seeing. Sometimes the things are right in front of you, and possessing an eagle eye is about becoming aware of the things that are in front of you, and then recognizing that, so that then you can. Take, take those opportunities wherever it might be. Four is think and become. Uh, think and become is um, literally built on this concept of uh, conceive, believe, achieve. Uh, so it's the idea of uh, <coughs> sowing seeds and uh, then just watering them, you know, and you know, allowing them to then come to fruition. Uh, but it's really about understanding your own power, your own confidence, and your own self-belief. Uh, and these are the ingredients that are needed, uh, quite essential for you to then move forwards, rather uh, from an in- from an internal standpoint to an external standpoint. Uh, stage five is uh, wata or wata, 
And uh, the, idea, the idea behind that is about conquering your fears. Uh, so that one's pretty self-explanatory and breaking through anything that's holding you back. Uh, so uh, releasing those notions. Uh, six is honestly express yourself. Six is an important one because it's where you go from, the first five steps are all internal. Right, so you're internalizing, you're looking inwards, and then when you connect inwards, only then can you externalize and and present yourself out in the real world, right? So the uh, honestly express yourself is about um, being true to yourself and acting with um, an an ecology and a congruency with whatever ends you want to meet. But being honest to yourself, more importantly, and I think a good example of that is a lot of people, uh, especially in like say a corporate environment or in a work environment, you know, they, they're scared to say something to their boss because it might offend the boss. But what if you knew how to say what you had to say without offending them, right? You, would, you could still potentially get your idea across. Whether they buy into it or not is a separate, separate, uh, uh, separate conversation. But the fact that you actually were able to then speak your own truth and be honest to yourself allows you to then carry yourself through life being you, not trying to be somebody you're not. And that's tiring. It's tiring to try and pretend to be something, somebody you're not. And there's a lot of people that are doing that. I know this because I've had to go through it as well. Um, seven is be like water and it's about getting into the flow. It's being, uh, uh, being fluid, right? When you're in the flow, everything just happens as a natural cause of nature. Everything just happens time appropriately, and it's and it's the synchronicities uh, around that space. You know, Marilyn's just joined her. She, me and her, when we talk, and she's constantly talking about synchronicity. Being in the flow is is that creation of synchronicity. You think of something, and then it appears, right? And it it takes mastery to get to that point where things are happening easily and effortlessly, literally. And that is being in the flow. Um, and we talk about four different levels of being in, in the flow between vision and happiness and so on in the book. Um, uh, a stage eight is power side forwards. And this is about really using your strengths to your maximum utility. You've got strengths, uh, everybody's got strengths, um, and everybody's got weaknesses. And it's, the idea is just take what works. The whole idea of Jeet Kune Do was use what works. But why don't we do that with our own uh, non-martial arts combative elements, right? Why don't we take what works with us in our lives and use that to our maximum advantage, to other people's maximum advantage, what I would say to maximum utility, and then, then move forward towards your uh, end, end desires. And then uh, finally is stay ahead. And stay ahead is once you, once you come into your strength, then it's about uh, identifying how you get ahead of yourself. Bruce talked about this idea about being behind the curve or staying ahead. Uh, if you're behind the curve, you end up being defensive and you end up being in a protective position. It's um, a disadvantageous position to be in, in most cases. Uh, staying ahead will, is the ultimate position to be in. And this is, all, this is uh, not, not pre-predicting uh, what's going to happen next, but just responding but quicker and faster and just being that, that fraction ahead of what your opponent's trying to do. And that way you can navigate yourself in that combat situation better. And this is saying, do it, do it in life, right? But in life, you know, everybody's life has got a rhythm and, and it's about understanding what your rhythm is. You may not even realize you had a rhythm. Everything in life's got a rhythm. And things happen. If you've got a daily rhythm, as in your daily routine, there's a rhythm there. And it's about understanding your rhythm and, and uh, whether the rhythm that you're in is your rhythm or is somebody else's defined rhythm. Coming into your own rhythm and then dancing to your own song. All right, so that's nine. But I have got a bonus, and that bonus is a, there is a secret chapter which I, I, nobody really knows about at the moment. And this, that one's called Learn the Art of Dying. And that, that is something that we're going to do as an audio initially. And um, uh, we will be releasing that soon. And that is about really returning back to your original freedom. So that's going to close the whole circle. I'm going to ask you another question, but if you ever watch a, a TV series, um, and if you don't get to see it, you can always go on YouTube, you'll find Bruce talks about this kind of stuff on a thing called Long Street uh, with James Franciscus. Bruce put <coughs> up in four episodes um, just after he'd done Big Boss um, in Hong Kong. And um, the four episodes are the only time Bruce talks about Jeet Kune Do. And what he's doing is teaching a blind man how to fight.
also, if you listen to it, is teaching him how to actually be and live with his disability. Um, and where Lack's coming from with the book, to a certain extent also, is that Jeet Kune Do is a Tao, or a Tao, or how you want to read it. It's a way. It's not just martial arts. This is what we're trying to get across, <coughs> is that, to a certain extent, Bruce Lee <coughs> was more than just martial arts. And that's where it's like open your mind, be formless, shapeless.